like we're actually jumping into another game here, Scott. We got uh, uh, Daiki uh, Moriyama going against Shoma Itonami. So it looks like uh, potentially two Japanese players here going head to head with uh, Daiki in the lead by one game right now. So this is an interesting set with 10 minutes left. We see uh, quite a few Pokemon on the field here, two Kangaskhan's, and it uh, looks like maybe uh, the Kangaskhan of Daiki maybe going mega there. I didn't get a chance to see which side it was on, but it does look like it's Daiki's Kangaskhan. Uh, bringing a Cresselia and then a Heatran there for Shoma. Fake out now for Shoma into the Cresselia slot here, doing uh, just a little bit of damage there, but a confused Kangaskhan looking to potentially attack, you know, uh, with frontal bond, you know, the critical hit is the same thing as yeah. hitting twice, so maybe not too big of a deal there, but definitely makes it just a little bit more uh, satisfying, you know, yes. it's like a boom, you get the big single <laughs> hit, like, tank is kind of getting it done. Yeah, and uh, we get the switch into Landorus now. We'll fire off and intimidate here on onto the Kangaskhan as well as the Cresselia, reducing uh, their attack by one stage. Yeah, that's a big deal, you know, uh, especially with... Uh, you know, Kangaskhan, I guess it's weakened now, but I guess it's really a big deal here. It's the fact there's only two Pokemon remaining in one side, and it's going to be tricky to try to uh, get those knockouts. Lander's often choice hold, item holder. We don't know if it is here or yet or not. Uh, I guess either way, you know, just, you know, intimidate now. If there's any left on Daiki's side, it's going to be easy to, you know, keep that applied to these physical Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the one big advantage is you get the healthier Kangaskhan, but really going to have to do something with that quickly to come out on top of this. And it looks like both of our players are locking in moves here at the last second. Did get that Intimidate off, but Kingscon does seem to be really, really low on HP here. Manages to switch it out, preserving that Mega Pokemon, which can be so, so valuable. Into the Amoongus that should uh, be able to take an attack uh, from either of these Pokemon really, really well. Knock off onto the Cresselia slot from the Landorus there of Shoma. And a double up, picking up the Faint there. Great choice to double up into that slot, either predicting the switch or just realizing that that Pokemon... Uh, uh, was going to be tough to get rid of at any other point in this battle and uh, Shoma making some moves here uh, with uh, maybe potentially their world championships run on the line. Maybe, and you know, I think it's a big deal too to uh, get that Amoongus out in the field relatively safely there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd still be a little bit concerned if I'm Shoma. You know, you've got to worry about this Pokemon, one of the best counters to Kangaskhan. Uh, even though you punish the other Sly, like, oh no, you know, now I've got to deal with this Amoongus yes. that... Uh, it's going to redirect my attacks and have to worry about score on both of these Pokemon. You really don't want to lose any turns at this point in the battle where you only have two Pokemon remaining. Mm -hmm. now, it's not like you can protect Stall and just like hope they don't knock out the sleeping Pokemon at this point. <laughs> Nothing to switch it out for. Uh, yeah. I also I like seeing all the time for this uh, Pokemon being replaced. I don't know like it seems a little weird sometimes when you're watching at home. Like, well, why is it taking 40 seconds to figure out what Pokemon you want to bring back in? Uh, but you know, making the wrong choice there is often a game loser, especially at a game like this. It seems to be close. You know, we've got uh, three Pokemon left on one side previously, four, but since the two are weakened, uh, it's closer than it looked. And you know, you make the wrong Pokemon, what you bring in, or choice of what you bring in, uh, pretty easy to lose the game. And uh, kind of seeing why here, I think you get to worry now. Uh, this Kangaskhan looks like he's in range. You know, Earthquake, Rock Slide, either of them could potentially pick this up and uh, turn this game around in a hurry. Yeah, there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot at stake here. So <laughs> taking as long as you can on each turn. I think is is critical. You never want to make uh, that wrong decision when uh, when there's a, not only a huge prize pool on the line, but uh, you know you're you're playing in front of e either your friends and your fans and, and and just for your country in general. It looks like both players have decided on the move here, and it's going to be Kangaskhan with a fake out uh, onto Shoma's Kangaskhan from Daiki. There, uh, probably uh, the best call that you can possibly make. And this Roxley should be able to pick up the feint of the Kangaskhan. Oh my gosh, what Kangaskhan hanging in there! By a thread and manages to get off uh, a little bit of a spore onto Shoma's Kangaskhan, who will uh, be sleeping, I believe, for one turn no matter what. Yeah, I'm really surprised at the spore on that at target, though. I figured that the play on Shoma's side, you've got to go for that rock slide. I hope for a knockout on Kangaskhan and or a flinch. I didn't get either, but, you know, if you do survive on Kangaskhan, you know that, you know, the spore is probably going to come to Landorus because Amoongus can't redirect those attacks. Uh, but it chooses to spore the Kangaskhan now, so again, you can Rock Slide or Earthquake to try to pick that Kangaskhan knockout up, uh, where Rage Putter doesn't really do anything, and pretty surprised. And Kangaskhan actually going for a Sucker Punch into the Kangaskhan slot there of uh, Shoma, so doing some decent damage, uh, finally getting that Kangaskhan down just a little bit there, and uh, it looks like we don't see any moves connect from Shoma there, who might have seen a, a double miss there and a spore from Amoongus. 
this. Yeah, this seems too bad there. A little bit surprised to uh, allow himself to be hit by the attack there, though. Um, yeah, strange. surprising. Yeah, uh, not Could've just yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not exactly sure what the move set here is on the on the King's Con for uh, Shoma there, but yeah, it does take uh, quite a bit of damage there. Both Pokemon hanging on in the yellow does look to be in Daiki's favor. King's Con could potentially wake up here, but with Amoogis out there on the field, uh, being able to maybe redirect an attack, it looks like Daiki uh, has it all but wrapped up. Yeah, I think so. Uh, that <laughs> it's hard to do much with two sleeping Pokemon. Even if Kangas kind of wakes up here, it's going to be tough. Amoogis can deal with it, and uh, wisely, we see the Rage Powder going up. Yep, there it is. The Rage Powder is going to go ahead and uh, redirect uh, any attacks here. King's Con still asleep for Shoma there on the bottom of the screen. Lander still asleep for Shoma there as well. Of course, had to sleep for at least one. Turning King is Khan. Oh, going for that power up punch now for Daiki. A move that we, I feel like we don't see as much anymore in favor of low kick that uh, just seems to get more done on the turn than it needs to get stuff done. But now uh, locked and loaded with a sucker punch that should do a lot of damage here. I've actually seen a lot of power up punch so far at the World Championships, but I agree with you. The trend was definitely toward low kick previously. I've seen a lot of uh, Amoongus Kangaskhan teams, even one Clefairy Kangaskhan team in the World Championships. And typically with the redirection, we've been seeing the power up punch come back again. So uh, maybe time to mix up the old new again. And the Sucker Punch from Kangaskhan actually might not pick it up. Yes, it does. Just barely. It looked like it looked like that second hit maybe wasn't going to do it in uh, Daiki Moriyama. Going to go ahead and take, I think, this set uh, against Shoma Itonami there. And uh, a big, big win uh, for these players. Both uh, probably just really, really tired after a long day of competing and still have the top eight and top four. Potentially. Yeah.